episode 116 everyone uh unfortunately sorry for um the uh we're missing a team member we're, mi we're missing matt ashley who's done yep. a ton of uh sponsorship tables and sales and, and has a, a, a plethora of experience he gave us his notes but he got tied up with a client so uh it's just jason and i unfortunately i'm really sorry it's the original yeah no it's, it's just not gonna us, be the three but... amigos just the two amigos today but, but you know um, this is a big topic because for sure you know this comes up a whole lot and yes you know well it's paramount well, let me just say this make sure stay to the end and win we're gonna give some oh, yeah. house cleaning yeah the og is yeah. exactly right um old uh yeah. at least i am very uh, original very very original, original guys um you know the the whole thing about sell the sizzle not the steak it's funny my son did an internship and they were talking about that and i it's something that we we you know it kind of makes sense but kind of what does that mean and what it means is is to not make everything we do transactional mm. That's a you, big picture we need point, to, but I love yeah, that, man. We need to sell the experience. We need to sell the intangibles. We need the to mission. sell the, th the mission, the things that are going on, and what our donors are going to receive, but not in an intangible way. You're going to get eight seats. It'll be third row, three mentions in social media, your yep. name up on the banner, and, you know, may or not, you know, and may or might not get a bottle of champagne. Well, that's very transactional because it's, if I give you this much money, this is what I'm going to get. Correct. What we want to encourage you to do and the way that we see people, nonprofits that are really successful, especially if you've been struggling, because the way to get to push to that next level is for that to happen, to sell that access. You know, we're getting exclusive access. You're going to be around this. You know, I was talking to, um, uh, Matt previously we were he was on the road he's just in a place where he couldn't uh to get on here and you know he talked about don't underestimate the power of your audience mm. don't underestimate the power of the audience that you have gathered to draw people who want to be there but right. you know that's really something special because a lot of times we kind of forget that we've got a gathering of let's just say I'm going to use the number 300 people mm -hmm. typically you know, we're talking about 300 people who have some kind of capacity who are in the upper 10, you know, in the 10 top 10%, let's mm -hmm. just use that, not even 2%, mm -hmm. let's just say top 10%, a lot of one percenters are going to be there just Hopefully. by default, Hopefully. because they're typically in the giving side. So all of a sudden, we're people that people want to be around. Mm -hmm. There's people that want to have a presence. There's they want exclusivity to, to it, know. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's an exclusivity to it, for sure. And um, so there's a couple of different ways, and that's what we want to do. Because if I go to a car dealer and I say, look, there's going to be, you know, I'll give you a great example. Um, I did an event about, oh, it's probably been five, six years ago with an entrepreneur group I did. And look, um, I just called up the car dealer. I said, look, we're going to have 50 millionaires in one room one time. I said, we'd like you to come be a sponsor and, you know, bring a couple of your oh, Maseratis, you told put a couple like of Maseratis out there yeah. and just do it. Yeah. And, you know, they gave us $5,000 Yeah. plus, you know, we, they brought their, brought three of their cars, set them up. It was a cool deal. Airplane hanger. Well, they sold three cars. Well, let me tell you something with awesome. Maserati sales, $5,000, they'll pay, they would pay $5,000 every day to sell three Maseratis yeah. every day. Okay. Cause they're hundred thousand plus cars. And so, you know, that's the, the thing is that was what it was. It was the audience that tied to it. If you're doing a golf tournament, if you're doing, um, you know, you're a lot of times these are business owners, business leaders, people want to be there. Financial people want to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be surprised how many financial planners, if you just, if you present it out the right way where they go, well, yeah, I'd like to be there. I'd like to see, have, you know, have an audience with those people because I, it's not only being at the table, sponsoring, seeing their name up there. It's the, yeah. to be there with that organ, you know, with them and to be present. Precisely. I'm not a big fan of like promoting the idea of like um, getting high on your own supply. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you're creating a, a, a place where folks should want to go, right? Like I'm not mm -hmm. saying you're doing them any favors, but if you look at it, you are providing um, a place where they can network. Obviously they can give. Uh, that's the, that's the, the, the main focus, but you know, make it to where it's a, it's a, it's a place where folks actually do want to go. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a certain exclusivity to it. And and Jason mentioned this at the onset. There's a lot of intangibles 
I'm always really enthralled with the idea of this being such a wonderful way to get so much pre-committed dollars in the door before the event, you know, or, yeah. or you know, money in the door, frankly, before the event even takes place, before the day of. And I always, I, I can't stop thinking about Jay when we're when we were talking to a client. I forgot who it was. I wouldn't say, say, share their name anyway, but uh, at this point, I forgot. But we were, you and I were taken aback when we were doing the math on what it cost um, for the table for the table of eight, mm -hmm. and they were upside down on the cost for what they yeah were they were losing money every before table. the and we said no, we can't do that. As a matter of fact. We want to charge more than you've ever charged before. Yeah. And they go, why? And we say, because of the people that you're helping. Right. Well, you know, yeah, it's so. about your mission and about the money that you're raising. And, and, you know, to your point, it's not being, you know, we talk about being high on your supply as an individual, but as an organization, you need to be high on your supply. You need to yep. think as a, as a, as a group about what you're doing, yep. you know, and, and that's where it's got to be about the mission. I, I get some, you know, I hear, I, I've talked to somebody and I'll say, okay, I want you to imagine that you're calling me up because you're going to, you know, you want to get me to sponsor something and I this want is a, just this is give me your tactic. pitch and go. Yeah, we want it. We want it. And the first thing they lead with, the very first thing that they lead with is, well, you know, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We've got this, 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 and we've got a table for eight. You also get, and they go into what I get. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then they'll come around to talk about the mission and I may have to ask, you know, well, what exactly are you guys do? We want to flip that and, table around. And do it. Exactly. Because yeah. we want to start off with, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Jason with ABC Charity. We send kids to camp. Yep. And this is what we're doing. And I'm using that for an analogy because if y'all have been here before, sure. you know that that's my analogy always. We're sending kids to camp. And, you know, last year we sent 75 kids to camp, paid for their scholarship. It's $1,000 a kid. This year we want to send 150 $150,000 and we'd really like you to participate. Yeah. I haven't talked about table sponsor because I don't even know where they're, I got to connect them to the mission first. Right. I've got to get them into the fold. And hopefully this is somebody we know and I'm just not cold calling. I mean, it's, I'm calling Trevor to say, Hey, Trevor, Hey man, we're, our events coming up. We're going to send 150 kids to camp and they're a thousand bucks a scholarship. Now I'm not asking you to do it all, but I'd love for you to buy, you know, you and your wife to come and bring some of your rich friends. Yeah. And, and, you know, never do we ever get into the whole thing about what I get. Now, once we've determined on a spot, a level and they start asking those questions, then I can tell them that, right. but I don't ever want to lead with what I'm, what they're getting. I want to lead with what they're, what the impact of what they're giving is going to do. Well, I hope what is that? Write that what down. Is, yeah, I, I want to lead with what their gift is going to do, yeah, yeah. not what they're going to get. Under promise and over deliver, we always say, right? But under promise, well, all the social media even, accolades and all that stuff, and over deliver the mission. It's right? it's over just you got to well you you, you want to over deliver not because of what we're going to do, but over deliver based on that's you want your focus and the predominant part yeah. of that conversation to be on what the organization is doing, not what they're going to get in a sponsorship. Yep. Yeah. You know, uh, Randall has a deal where, you know, doers do, um, thinkers think feelers yeah. feel and, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And, and so you got to kind of read the room and, and there is something to that, yeah. you know, you got to come down to it. It may be the fact that, Hey, we're here to raise, you know, we really raise this, this is where we're at. And I'd like to know where you'd like to come in at. Totally. I don't even talk about the, don't talk about the table and the people. Well, what am I going to get for 25 grand? It's at, okay. I know they're because they all have a number already. Yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Becky, you said something recently. I want to get, I want to start asking you a couple of questions, Jay, because I want to get some feedback from you and the audience. Becky, what did you do recently where you said a lady, you had something where you had a high, high ticket price for a table, but folks buy it at the event for the next year's event. And it, it has, it's tied to an individual or something along those lines. Sure. I was thinking about that today, as a matter of fact, Becky. Yeah, our, the, the VP VP table. VIP yeah, table. Yeah, VIP table. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I think that's really, really cool. And so well, we're going to get into that, and that's bigger picture. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we really think there's an exclusivity to this, right? So once you have things in place and you have a target audience and, and folks that you want to – and I want to backtrack and, and talk about how we go about that um, and ask you, Jay. But um, there is an exclusivity and a, and a real estate factor. And folks that want to be closer to the stage – and folks that want to be the center of attention. And I'm not going to say that it has to do with ego, 
But oh, these I are do. things. It absolutely oh, has. Yeah. I think I, it absolutely I, has. It, it does. It does. I wanted this to be more politically correct. I'm sorry. I'm not being politically <laughs> but I said, correct. Let's just, yeah, yeah. For, and no, precisely. And, I, and we're not losing focus. But that, trust me, that really does goat people, right? Into wanting to pay yeah. those higher, those higher sponsorship prices um, and, and and table prices. So please don't forget that. Please don't shy away from that. Um, but Jay, I was just curious. What would be the what would be step one when you're identifying these folks? Let's just well, say let me. I want to answer a question. I want to clarify something really quick that, yeah. that just came off. And and so, um, you know, there was a deal. So there's oh, it all, part of it depends on your setup. Okay. Yeah. You gotta you gotta fit this to what your organization does. Yep. Um, I know that Beverly's got an event this weekend and they don't do tables in a traditional way because that's just not the way that's not their style. It's a, you know, it's a move. It's kind of a eat around, um, you know, so everybody's kind of moving. They've got tables for people to stop and, you know, have their hors d'oeuvres and, and eat and stuff like that. But it's not a traditional, what I would say, a sit down gala. It's not, there's not tables from that standpoint. There's, you know, you get in the door now, maybe they've got a VIP section or you can do some things like that. And I think that's where, um, everybody talks about, you know, don't tie a sponsor, an underwriting. Okay. I'm going to use the, when I say sponsor, whatever, for me, when I say sponsor, put, put the words, however you want to, I'm talking about table sales yep. and uh, you know, how people come, how right. you get people in the door. Yep. When I talk about underwriting, I'm talking about those tangible and intangible things, you know, the red the carpet, cost. the centerpieces, yeah. the audio visual, anything that's going to be a cost. But we want to make, we want to still want to make money because right. again, it's not about what that thing cost. It's not about what that, you know, we're seeing people sell. Well, Becky did it. She sells a bathroom for $500. It cost her nothing except for a sign. We've had people do it for $4,000 to refreshing station, $4,000. The bathrooms are there. Yep. It didn't cost them any more. They didn't have to pay extra rent to use the bathroom, but it's there. The restrooms are there. They just put a sign up and said sponsored by. So this, these are things that are, when I'm talking about sponsorship, I'm talking about, you know, like table sales, but it applies to everything. So sponsorship and underwriting are synonymous when we talk about this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's all part of the same effort. It's not about what they get. I want to go back to what Trevor mentioned about, you know, having that yeah. real estate. That That's really yeah. important to, to know. Mm hmm now this is not a cut and dried situation. So don't, don't, don't assume that, you know, you've got a billionaire that sits in the back and a, you know, a thousand air that sits, can sit in the front. That's not what it is necessarily, but people do want exclusive, you know, that's why when we talk about Access tables and somebody location. says, you know, our, our platinum sponsor, we've only got one mm -hmm. platinum sponsors our title sponsor. This is the deal. And they're the, they get two tables because, you know, we're expecting you, you to bring and show up. They're really believing it and it's $50,000. Well, the math doesn't work. I mean, if it's 50 grand for two tables and the next, you know, we got 25 grand or 10 grand. Well, why wouldn't I just go buy two tables at 10 grand and save myself some money? Because it's not about what you're getting. How many of you guys have a table that's like maybe let's say of, of 25,000 and then a table of 2,500? Do, do I, I just, just pop, put a little deal, show a hand if you've got something that spread apart. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, that's awesome. But um, I, I can tell you, we see it all the time. We see it all the time where, For you know, sure. they've got their top sponsorship levels, 25 grand, and then they're doing tables. I know an organization that has 25,000 and they'll sell tables for a thousand bucks. I was able to get them to not let those, you know, they could use it at the end where they didn't put those out for sale, but you know, you're, you're not helping yourself by, by discounting and giving people, but no going up. So you figure out what is the bare minimum that our table costs. Let's just say it costs a thousand dollars. It's going to cost me a thousand bucks to have everybody come and sit there. Bad you know, that's, everything. Take yeah. all my expenses, divide it by the number of tables we've got, divide it by number eight. That's my cost. So let's say it's a thousand dollars. I'm just simple math. I know it, sure. it typically costs more than that. And we put our minimum cost to say, we want to make at least 1500 bucks a table. So we're going to make, you know, do that. So $2,500. Well, just because I've got a sponsorship level of $25,000. Well, nobody can make sense of that. If you're making it transactional based on what you're going to get. Right. So for $22,000, I get to sit at the front as opposed to the back. Well, I mean, unless you're going to the, going to the fights or you're going to go to a uh, Taylor Swift concert, probably not going to matter. I mean, you know, it's not going to change that much. 
But in case of this, it's about what the mission and what happens. And so selling that sizzle, you know, it's that, hey, we've got a bunch of people, you know, this is going to be the uh, awesome event. We've got a who's who's going to be there. So and so, you know, we've got Trevor. And oh, someone Sh already bought a table right next Trevor to and Shelby yeah. Nelson are going to be, you know, yeah, you're going to be up a table. If you go this, you're going to be up there by the Nelsons yeah. and uh, all name. that kind of stuff. That's where you've got to be is talking about that. Does anybody have an experience like that where you, you know, you, you guys have, uh, yeah. let me ask you ask. this. Show of hands. Yeah. Who here has a $50,000 sponsorship? Anybody? Nice. Christy. Yeah, I know Christy's a prolific fundraiser. Christy. And so, all right. Anybody else? All right. Who has, who, if you don't have a 50, who has a 25? Got one. Anybody else show of hands sure. over on the, you know, got For one. Sure. Becky's there. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, Beverly's got a 25,000. That's right. Anybody else got a 25? It doesn't matter. 25,000 sponsorship of anything. Doesn't have to be a table. We're just talking a, about a, could be a sponsorship sponsor, slash underwriting. Sponsor. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me ask a question. Who here would like to have one at 25 to 50,000? If you don't currently. Oh, oh I, you are go. you sure? Now you're telling me that you, you would it. like to have that. Let's think about it. And then we've got a bunch of folks that are saying, no, they don't want a $25,000 sponsorship. Okay. Yeah, Mark, Mark, you don't want a $25,000? Yeah, right. I mean, come on, Lowell. Mr. West. Melissa. All right, so I'm, I'm having a little fun here, and I appreciate everybody stepping up. Here's, here's the whole thing. This is the idea. We don't get what we don't ask for. In 30 years of doing this, and maybe somebody here has got a deal where you've had somebody come up and say, you know, y'all that asked for $25,000, you asked for it, right? Nobody just came up out of nowhere and said, hey, you know what? $10,000 is not enough. I'm going to give you twenty five. Did anybody ever have that happen? No one. Crickets. Mm. Okay. But they, we know they buy them, right? We know that they pay that write those checks. We all see it and hear it, you know. So and so is a title sponsor. So I'm going to tell you a, a story. I'm not going to share who it was, who it was, but we had an organization we were working with, coaching along, and I think Trent, we were both on the call. And we said, "What was the, what's the most expensive? Uh, what's the highest deal you guys have ever sold? It was like 15 grand." I said, well, "What's the most you're asking for? 25,000." And I knew based on other information that they had capacity. They just, it was just their, you know, they were, they were tied up in this transactional space, but they had done a good job of getting the right people in the room. And so I just said, why don't, let's just change it. Ask for 50, make your top level the 50,000, but we've never sold 25. I said, I know. So you're not losing anything. You're yeah. just asking. Nothing lost. She calls back and says, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this. She goes, not only did I get a thousand, but I sold two to 25,000. Because it changed yeah, perspective. Yeah. Because it changed the perspective. We got them talking about the impact that this was going to have, not what they were going to get, but what they were going to give. Selling the sizzle. This is an event you don't want to miss. I know that you went last year. You had a great time. We're going to get up there this year again. But this year, we're going to raise even more money. Yep, because we're going to affect you as know? many kids this time. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to help. Really you know, good. Hey, we had a question, Jay. Christine had a mm -hmm. question. Becky, can you help us answer this when it comes to your... Um... Uh, the VIP table. Christine had a question. I think it was for w when we brought up uh, Becky selling those tables. Do you mean they sponsor a VIP table, but they don't automatically get a seat at the table? That's a separate purchase for a seat, for instance. Oh, cool. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, that is for you, Becky. Thank you so much. I know you've had a lot of success with that. That's pretty awesome. So, um, Jay, I want to. Uh... So what she's saying is they don't they don't allow they they just have they do spot there's again we're talking about yeah you just got you got to buy a separate uh, un, let's just call it uh, she says sponsorships but I'm I say underwriting so they're kind of the same yeah. thing it's you know you're doing that yeah. so um, the VIP table yeah yes. is a separate okay, thing that's what right. Becky now I think I believe what she's yeah. saying is yeah. they do all their sponsorships underwriting cool. their synonymous yeah. terms yeah. they sell do all that then they yeah. come back and if you want to go to the event. You have to pay admission just like everybody else does. And I think Becky, you told me like you told us that like some lady buys it every year or something along those lines. Oh, the right? VIP table, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. It's a yeah. live auction package. That is a great idea, Hunker Scene. That's awesome. But Thanks you for know, sharing, you Becky. can do that in everything. Everybody likes VIP. 
Everybody wants to be exclusive. That's we had the an point. event. That's we had a, a, a an event here a while back. A, a client, and they did an event, and it really, you know, some people were like, "Well, why am I not in the VIP room?" Awesome. Yeah. There were some people. Who said, well, why I'm not? I'm not in the VIP. Well, you can next year. So you're saying that you want VIP? Yes, I want VIP status. I love the idea of a carrot. I don't want to be excluded. I love you're playing the long game. I love the idea of a carrot for next year because you can mm -hmm. already get committed dollars for the following. I think that's fantastic. I love that idea. I love the idea of thinking on the fly of something that you haven't done. If someone asks you, because what's going to end up happening is these really creative ideas are going to breed new questions, right? If you hit it out of the park this year, it's going to breed new thoughts and questions and creativity from your guests and supporters. And they're going to start, Hey, are you going to have that again? Or, Hey, are you going to do something like this or, or what have you? And just realize that there's a, there should be a cost associated with that because of the access. Um, because once again, it's all going towards raising money. As Jason said, we don't mind saying egos involved because it is involved because we're here to raise money. That's, what, that's well, what rich people do. like rich things. Sure. They want access. Rich people. They like to, you know, they, yeah. they like to go to the front of the line. They, they like to, they like to buy the and line willing pass. To pay for it. They cut because they don't want to wait in it. line. Yes. They're willing to pay because they got plenty, you know, they got plenty of money. So they're willing to yep. support with it for special access. Correct. They like to sit, they like to go to the front row at concerts. Um, you know, it's why they buy first class tickets. Uh, they, all, all those things are, you know, yeah. Becky's saying upgraded wine, upgraded dessert, upgraded. See, I, I'm probably, I'm, I'm I think push you out there, Becky. I think if you just, if you put out VIP tables and you said, Hey, we're going to have a couple of extra VIP tables and you, you sell them for 10 grand, they're $10,000. And here's what, you know, if you want to be a VIP. Yeah. And you want to help awesome. us help us push our mission. Here you go. Yeah. And this is what you get. Now this is the dial. Stuff. Now see Becky's tapping into both sides of it. So Becky goes out and she sells the sponsorship and you get nothing except recognition. The fact that you're getting invested at a higher level of sponsorship, then you got to pay to get in the room. So you're having to access. Yep. And then what she's doing is she's got VIP exclusive access. And I think you could leverage that up to say, you know, we're going to give all these other goodies and this is what you get. Um, I love that. Everybody really who cool. sits in the back wants Upgraded to be in the front. Yep. There are exceptions. Everybody who sits in the back awesome. wants to be up front. Trevor and I were at a convention in Las Vegas. Okay. We're at a convention there for several days and we're walking through by our, by our hotel. Our, our, we were in the, we were at uh, Caesar's Palace and there's a buffet, this giant buffet. And by the way, the two ninety nine dollars buffet is not there anymore. Oh my word. It's uh, about $70 to go to the buffet. Yeah, my omelet was like, a $70 I, we, omelet. We, we, all, we went, yeah, we went for breakfast and I saw that I, I said, oh yeah, I'm going to buy for all of us. And I was like, holy cow. I was yeah, like yeah, shocked. Yeah. yeah. So, but we noticed there were these lines. They have the diamond line and the seven yeah. stars line. And what those are is access VIP front row. You pay it. Well, you pay if you're standing yeah. there in line trudging along with all the rest of the folks and you see the, the special access, you kind of want that. Right. Yeah. We have a trip that's based on special access. Mm -hmm. It's the, the grand old Opry. Yeah. Special access because you get picked up at the front of the front door. They whip, take you around in a golf cart around to the, the private entrance that all the entertainers use. You go through the entertainment like you're a VIP. You go sit in yeah. the, same, the same suites that an entertainer, an entertainer comes and talks to you. And then you get to be on stage for the first half of the concert. Not backstage, it's on stage. Not backstage, on stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right there where everybody, you can put your rhinestone cowboy hat and your spangly boots and get up there and everybody's going to see you so yeah. it's that kind of thing people are you know it's that access and that vip it's a feelings that you're you're offering and that's where we talk about the sizzle you know the thing i always think about sizzle is one of my favorite things bacon yeah. i love bacon yeah i i, I thought you know i mean especially in the morning bacon. the way it actually, smells the way it all the bacon don't we? i mean the fact yeah. is it's just protein but yeah. You know, it's protein and that's it. And somebody goes, oh, I don't want to. I love bacon. Everybody loves bacon. They put bacon on everything. Everything even makes, bacon they, makes even everything they better. they say they don't. Yeah, yeah even if, when people say, I don't want to eat bacon, they like bacon because they're eating some kind of artificial bacon. So the point is, it's that's what gets you enticed into it. What is it? What is it? Well, it's just protein. You get the same thing from a protein bar, a hamburger patty, 
you know, a multitude of other things, but it's that sizzle, that smell, that the feeling, okay, makes you feel good. That's what we need to do with our nonprofits. With our mission is make them feel good. I, I want that. somebody to feel excited. I love that. Uh, very, very funny. Uh, and I love that we're making connections. This is awesome. We're making, we're, we're networking in, in real time. I think that's awesome. Thanks so much, Becky, for helping Christine. That's fantastic. Thanks for coming, Christine. Um, and well, it's so funny. Oh, so check this out. So it doesn't cost thousands of dollars, by the way. And I'm certainly, no. not a well, I'm certainly not a wealthy man. However, I've been taking my daughters to baseball games in the last year. And I have uh, been buying tickets and I, I pay a little bit extra. Once again, they're not crazy. They're not thousands of dollars. And we've been sitting close to the dugout, like a few rows back, maybe like five, 10 rows back. And I had no you know, rhyme or reason for it other than I just wanted them to have a really cool experience and a, and a cool vantage. And I don't live down the street from a professional, you know, ball yard. So we've been going to baseball games. I went to a couple of baseball games in the last, in the last year. And um, each time we go, a player throws me a ball just because of where, <laughs> right? So I get my daughters, I get my daughters a ball at their, at the games that they go to. It is like, and, and I, it's just amazing. It's such a fun experience for them, especially for my little four-year-old, right? But I was, I was going, now I grew up in San Francisco going to Giants games and I probably went to 30 or 40 a year my entire childhood and I never got a ball. And I said, oh, I remember now it's because we were poor and we sat really far away, <laughs> right? So it's just, it's just, just simple, simple little, little twist of the dial and access gets, gets folks excited, gets them entertained and they want to go back and they want to crave, they, they crave and clamor for it even more. You know what I mean? Because it's fun. So that's, that's very, very interesting. I had that revelation. Uh, well, the, the, the thing, you know, the idea is we want everybody to feel good that comes to our events. 100%. But the reality is we're there to raise money. 100%. There are some people that have more money than others. Yep. We have to so tap into that. If, let's tap into it. How do we yep. do that? You know, it's like Becky's talking about, well, we do it. We have a VIP table. It's got mm -hmm. fancy this and more of that and this stuff here. And instead of getting $3,000 for it, she's getting ten. In the live and they have a lot of fun with it and everybody's cool pushing them. concepts yeah. and you know all that stuff is mad i mean we i've been part of organizations where they do something special for you know a certain level of table where they yeah. make a big deal about it they sit there and prompt out there with a yeah. bottle of champagne and the glasses and glove, white gloves and yeah. sparklers going and all this stuff and hey people they come out there and they're they're saying we'd like that. to pr have the presentation for our platinum and gold sponsors today yeah. and they come out and do all that and everybody's like well, how do we get, why don't we get some champagne? Yeah. We're well, not a hey. gold sponsor. Well, I oh. want to be one yeah. for a, a $200, not even a 200, a $70 bottle of champagne. All of a sudden you get people who want to spend, you know, $5,000 more money. I it's, love the idea. Just, you, talk about about, you, you talk about this. You talk about this with auction too, Jay. It's not the champagne. Certainly it's not, not the champagne. It's that the, they feel like they've been, they don't want to be left out. It's yeah. the sizzle. It's the excitement. They want to be part of that crowd and people will pay to do that. 100%. The idea is making, is, is identifying that market and where that lies and what you can, you know, what you can get and uh, uh, what will appeal to them. Cause sometimes, you know, it's like someone that gets into business for the first time and they're offering their services or whatnot. I talk to people about this all the time that are in different um, uh, uh, consulting roles and whatnot. And I go, Hey, when you first started doing that, did you have like some trepidation about when you throw that number out there? And they go, Oh yeah. And I said, well, have you had some situations where you threw the number out there, but they, and they said yes immediately and you could have gotten more. Oh yeah. I do that too. So that's fascinating. I think it's, here's a great deal. That. Great. Christy. Hey, Christy, yeah. Christy said yeah. when they do these galas, they get, they do limo service smart. for $25,000 more. Super smart. Um, and that's Becky, great. do you get, does it cost you money or do you get somebody to sponsor it underwritten? Christy. Yeah. That's a great idea. You talk about this. I love the idea of putting something like this in the live auction that Becky was talking about because she sold two for twelve thousand dollars this year or what have you. I you talk about selling parking spots all the time. I think that's just so cool. No, no, I mean you know, I know you, it's you part of the sponsorship level, but I'm just saying company. Yeah. Do you have somebody does a limo company donate or do you get somebody to underwrite? That would that? be a great that'd be a great question. I'm just I'm just asking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So they get so it's a double win. It's donated. So yeah. They get that donated and then they sit there and use it for something as a deal. So it's yeah, absolutely we call that free sizzle. We call that free sizzle. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we're taught here's the interesting thing. You know, I when I started off, I said let's not make it transactional about what they get. 
Yeah. It's about what they give. But now we're talking about things that sound transactional, but they're not. No, they're, because guess what? They're value adds. The, exactly. This is this yeah. is something special. You know, are precisely they may you know getting a, getting too. a limo is a limo. Yeah. Getting something done, and whenever you let them know. And let me tell you something. Here's something too that I've found that's real interesting. A lot of nonprofits they'll try to buy this stuff, and donors get a little frustrated with that they're like well i don't need you to give to buy pay me pay for something you know but they said no 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 we've it's been sponsored and underwritten oh well heck yeah i'll take it then precisely you know so be thoughtful about that there are things that you can do to go get that done and you just tell right up hey we've got and, and you tell the limo company hey we're going to do this for twenty five thousand dollars sponsors so they go oh these are the people I want access to because these are the people that are going to oh, use yeah. my serve that I can, you know, use my service, take me to the, to the airport for parties, go to dinner, all this yeah. stuff that don't want to get in the back of a, you know, they don't want to be, have to go get in the, in the banged out Uber ride. Um, yeah. you know, when they're going somewhere. Yep. So I think it's good. I, all these things are, are just, it's all about the limitation of creativity that you're doing. So don't, don't, let yourself get held back on what you think somebody wants yeah, or, or what beliefs. you would want. Yeah. Yeah. And, and please, you know, more. I, I'm not a wealthy person. I I know some I've been, I've got, I've been exposed a lot. I'm, and I'm talking about the 1% of the one percenters. They can buy anything they want. Mm -hmm. They don't need you to give them anything to get anything. But what you can do is make them feel special to make them feel like th that they do, they will accept that. That's what it's all about. Like I said, it's, it's, there is a separation. And when you do that, that's what people want. They want access. You know, it's why we get these cool things and, you know, you get, um, you know, I, I had, we had somebody, um, and I don't know what, what they do with there's Somebody, they had a pair of tickets for George Strait, front row tickets to George Strait. They're like, what do I do with this? And I was like, well, I would use them as a golden ticket raffle because everybody wants it. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people do you have that can pay $10,000? I don't know, but you've got plenty of people that can pay a hundred, but it's because everybody wants that. Yeah. Just because, yeah. Now people may say, well, you know, I don't like being up on the front row because I have to stand all the time. Bull. <laughs> everybody <laughs> likes being up on the front row. They yeah, just don't want to pay two grand a ticket it's or they can't pay two grand a ticket. Yeah. And that's how they just, you know, so, Spe being, everybody wants to feel special and everybody is special, but some people are more special than others. And whenever you do that, you can use that to leverage, to raise more money for your organization mm -hmm. and um, to do that. Can I backtrack, yeah. Jason, and ask you a question? Yeah. You want to, want to open it up for questions? Did you yeah, I want to just any questions yeah. anybody's got. While we're, about while we're yapping, situation. any questions or any, any experience or obviously the uh, it's a hit seeing what Becky has done at her events with um, selling the, the tables for the following year as a live auction. them, It's fantastic. Amazing leverage. Um, we're always big, big proponents of pushing and asking for more um, than you have before. I always think about once again, it's like, what is the most you've ever asked for at a table? Oh, $1,500. Okay. Well, can you do me a favor? Can you ask for 2,500 um, this year? Why? Mm -hmm. Well, tell the, tell folks what you're, what you're doing with the money, tell folks what, what you're doing, for the mission or where, what their dollars are going to be doing for the mission. And let's just see what, how it shakes out. Um, and then, you know, if you have a new venue, if you have an exciting, you know, some exciting entertainment or what have you, maybe you have some new, once again, sizzle um, and an access to an event that they haven't seen before. So there's, there's all sorts of great reasons to do that. Jason, if we don't know the, let's just say you're starting off new uh, in the space and you do, you know, you, 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 you're, the organization has had an event and had maybe some success or what have you. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to go about recruiting folks to make these kinds of sizable commitments? What would, what would be the best way that you would go about recruiting different organizations, people with access, what have you to make these? Investments? Well, the people exercise is what comes to mind first. I don't know if that's yeah. where you're going with that, but you know, well, the I'm first thing is, yeah, it's who do we know? The first thing I'm going to do is do a people exercise. I'm going to go to my committee, my board and say, let's just, yep. who do we know? Yep. Who do we know that, that would want to have an impact and, you know, review who the people, if I'm new, I want to know who everybody knows. Yep. 
Yep. Cool. Because awesome. usually, in and most of the time, nobody's done it. You Everybody sits around hands. the room and going, "Well, I really wish we could get Bill there Gates to come here. He's got a lot of money." Well, does anybody know him? No. Well, okay. Let's not move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ask He's the committee to Rolodex. give ten names. And yeah. you know, here's how you get those ten names, though. You can say, "Hey, would you give me ten names?" And only two people will. Just go around the room and write them down. Go around. Just get the big board. Get a piece of big, you know, the big sticky notepads and be prepared for it and say, okay, everybody, I want you to pull your phone out, go through and give me 10 names of people you think would help us. That's right. What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with the names, but we want to see if they might be able to, you know, if they might be interested in helping our mission. It takes a little bit. Now I go, come on, Lowell, you know, I know you know some people. Hey, Laura, who do you know? Come on, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Come on, Trevor. And everybody starts doing it. And once you get people pulling their phone, just go through the A's. Just give me one name. Okay, I got Alan. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll get to the B's. Bill, come on, give me a C. Charlotte, you know, and you, you start going through there and they start writing these names down. Then you go back with the names. You go, can they write a check for $10,000 and not miss it? They can, okay, or they can't. And it's a yes or no. It's a maybe, maybe is a no. Because this is, we really, these are people we know. You know, can they fill a table with 10 people or eight people? Well, there now we're kind of now we know who to start picking up the phone to ask because maybe they are if they're already with our mission. You know, I, I know that you know Mark West and his wife they've been coming to our event and you know hey Mark, you guys have been part of our organization for the last you know four or five years. You've been coming. You guys get a deal and you're sitting back there and I, I'd like to just visit with you about seeing if you could step up yeah. or see where you know to move up and to move up to a higher level. You know why. You know why uh, everybody always they, why they don't move up because nobody's asked them. I agree. You'd be they, surprised well, they're, what they're a little bit of attention you'd be they're surprised what a little bit of attention will do for a donor's ego. For sure, for sure, and purpose where that money's going. Right? Okay, this is an interesting deal because I know this guy Christie's talking about. It. Said Harold Ham never usually gives. But because he was friends with a committee member, he gave twenty five thousand. It was, however, just a one year deal. So let me let me tell you. So Harold Ham's a billionaire here in Oklahoma. Um, you know, big oil and gas guy, got a lot of money. His name comes up all the time. Everybody goes, "Well, should we could get Harold to come in here." Call Harold. Well, unless you know Harold, he's got kind of a small group of guys that he runs around with and does stuff with. And unless you can pick up the phone and call him, you're probably not going to get access get to him. Yet. Exactly. And, and that's the thing, but you don't need Harold. Harold's the guy that you go ask when you need a million dollars. Okay. You don't call that guy for 25 thousand Cause it's just not, that's, it's almost not even in the range. Let's go get the people that we know day in, day out, we can count on. And that, that's the whole idea. It's who we know, who we have access to. And if you sit there and, and I hear people say all the time, well, we don't have that high, bit, high donors. Have you ever asked them? You don't know well, that. No, what's you, you know, don't what's, know that. Yeah. what's the most expensive table you've been selling? Well, we've been selling for fifteen hundred. We do the math, and they go, "Oh, we're losing money." They never did the math. Mm -hmm. Literally, this happened. Yeah. Trevor was we we, yeah. we were on the call together. I prom they were doing they were losing money every time they sold a table. Like what in the world? We and that what bad. they were doing is they were going. I hope everybody spends a lot of money. Yeah. And you got to get out of that we mindset. We can't go in upside down. We cannot go in yeah. upside down. That's, but that's a, a trap. Let's, 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 let's go this way. Let's just, yeah. I want to kind of wrap this up in, in, in a really positive. Yeah, please. I want you to, you know, we'll get your, this. think about your mission, what you're wanting to do, and then we're going to allow people to participate. You know, Lowell, I, you know, I know that you care about kids and I know that you like to see, you know, good things happen. And I know you've got some capacity to do that. What I'm asking is, would you be, you know, would you partner with us to help us send a hundred kids? Yep. We want to get them all on the same side of the tables we are because, Boom. you know, and then I let him figure out where he wants to be. Yep. Yeah. Well, what do you have available? Yeah. Totally. You know, what, what, yep. this is, this is what, our, this is, you know, we still have our platinum sponsor. If I know that Lowell can write a big check and, and I, I, and I have that confidence that he can, you know, and I can say, well, but even if I, I'm not sure, cause you'll be surprised. Anybody here had a donor come out of nowhere and you were like, holy cow, I had no idea. Everyone has had one anybody. Come on, raise yeah. your hand. If you've ever had somebody, Christy, Becky, two of you, three, everyone Steve. has at some point or another. Come I want to hear some. Well, just put it down in the comments if you don't mind. 
what were you what was the amount and you were blown away that they give never never occurred to you that they had that kind of capacity could be a, could it be like an auction item as well where they made a could be yeah it could okay, be cool. i mean it happens all the time oh my gosh I, they bought a ten thousand dollar auction item. i had no whenever idea I, this person before when i was young Absolutely. when i was a young auctioneer um i'd always ask her where's all the money you're still a young auctioneer they'd sit to me, there, well they'd sit there and they'd tell me they'd tell me down at the, tell me down at the deal you know this is it's this this and this and i'm like then I'd get up to do the auction. I'm looking at those tables and they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's a guy in the back that's the high bidder in the back row that was invited a week ago. That's beautiful. Him and his wife show up, but you know, he just sold a company. They they got some liquidity. They want to go out and give back. And they showed up and said, Yeah, let's give back. Let's do this. So it all happens. A camper parent. Uh, we asked that's her cool. daughters to be the guest speakers, and then he gave uh, attended and gave us ten thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, so cool. um, Christy, the quest for a million dollars. There's a great example. Here's a, a lady. We I knew this lady gave like a hundred bucks, and I don't remember Christy if it was Christy that told me this. This, this may be the same story, uh, or it was somebody else. I think it was somebody else. That lady gave like a hundred, two hundred fifty bucks every year. At, when they did the year end, get asked, they always did it. Never did anything. That was what she did for years. And at the end, when she passed, she left him a million dollars, the organization. Super cool. And they never had an idea that she had that kind of capacity. Never knew. Yep. Um, you know, and I don't know if she would have done anything beforehand, but the point was, yeah, it was Christy. Okay. Yep. And it was something like that. Wasn't she gave a hundred or 250 bucks uh, a year or something like that. Yep. So, those are those things come out of nowhere. We have people. There are people out there that you're talking to. They're they're sneaky rich. You know they you got have no idea. You yeah. have no idea. That there's more people out there can, than you think. By the way, That's and and it is. Uh -huh. you know, there's a lot of money out there, and people that have that they're willing to do it, but they're just never asked. Yeah. And they're never brought up in that, and they never do it. So they figure, well, you must have it covered because you didn't ask me. And mm -hmm. I, I literally, you'd be surprised how many times they do. Well, I figured you already had it done because you didn't ask me. Mm -hmm. Wild. Yeah. All you have to do is ask any trepidation. Hey, if anyone has any, any trepidation or any fear or any, and that's really okay, by the way, asking for a lot of money can be anxiety driven. I totally, we totally get that. Um, but you need some encouragement or a helpful nudge. We saw Christine and Becky already connect uh, through chat. Feel free to connect with each other, please. There's never been any rules against that. But also, um, Jason and I are available for coaching. We're available every week. We do this week in and week out. We're available for coaching. We give our time away for free. Any any questions or I want to try this out or maybe you just want to bounce some ideas off a third mm -hmm. party. We're not going to share a ton of opinions with you, but we're going to share experience um, and ha happy to have some thought provoking conversations about that. So reach out to us to hjfundraising.com is a free coaching button that you can just click right there on the masthead. And, um, yeah, anyway, reach out to us. Well, I want to, I want to give you a couple of things. I, I want to leave you with a couple of things to think about when you lead oh, with wow. the mission. So cool. And when you lead with, with what your organization is doing, when you're meeting with somebody, if they take your meeting, they're expecting you to ask them. They know. They, they know. know you're going to ask them for money. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you're going to know pretty well whether they're going to give you something yeah, because yeah. they're taking the meeting. I, I don't. But... <laughs> I don't know how many times I've you know, and and maybe some of you now. There's sometimes I realize there's probably some exceptions to this, but typically when you're meeting with an individual or somebody, you know, they're prepared to do something. Otherwise, they're not going to meet with you. Yeah. And and I'm gonna. Uh, that's why, you know, you don't need to wait. You don't need to wait and ask for something later. Well, I'm just trying to build a relationship. Well, what you're doing is you're probably, you know, if they're depending on their personality type, you're annoying. You're wasting their time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, your time is valuable and your mission what is What happens? Well, well, you know so, what happens? Think about that. They're waiting for you to ask them for money and you don't ask them for money. So they think, well, she just really, uh, you know, wow. Christy really just thinks I'm cool and she just yeah, likes yeah. hanging out with me. The coffee's good here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's be, let's be, I mean, there's never been a time that I, I had somebody come and ask me back when I was in my telecom days. It's fine to be their friend. Ask me for money, for money <laughs> that I wasn't prepared to give them something. Now, based on what happened, it depended because I had a number in my head that I was going to do and it would go up or down based on what was going on. Good. And I can't tell you how many times 
if I chose the number, it was more than what they expected. If they chose the number, it was less than what I was prepared to do. We got a, there, some of y'all may have heard me talk about this before. A friend of Trevor and I's, um, he is a prolific fundraiser. Guy raised a lot of money, works for the V Foundation. He tells a story. He goes to the man's office. The guy said he's, they're doing a five-year commit, okay? This is for over five years, every year what they're going to do. He's expect he's going to ask this guy for $50,000 a year. And he says, hey, uh, he goes in there and talks to him. The, the donor says, hey, man, I'm just going to let you know. I've kind of had some issues, some things going on. My wife's kind of on me about this. I was prepared to do one thing. I'm not going to be able to do that. Cool. What's going on in, in Casey's mind is he's thinking, because he was thinking 50. They They've not talked about $50,000 a year, mm -hmm. but he was thinking 50. So immediately he goes, well, I guess maybe we can do 25. The guy gives, he doesn't say anything. He says, thankfully, I didn't, I kept my mouth shut and just listened. The guy said, look, all I can do is a hundred thousand a year for the next five years, but give me a year or two and I'll be able to up from that. That's a half million. $500,000 yeah. over five years. And he was just looking, thinking 50 to 250,000. Yeah. Uh, you know, 500,000, 250. Don't underestimate that. Great question, Christine, but don't underestimate that folks, when you go to meet them, they already have the 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 a number in mind frankly they a lot of these larger fortune 500 fortune 1000 organizations which we highly recommend going after as a matter of fact um please don't have any any trepidation about that they already have a budget in place for it it's just a, it's just the amount that they're going to give you well let me let me let me say it this way part of it's going to depend on what the ask is and who you're talking to if you're talking to the trigger puller the person that can say yes or decision no decision maker yeah you know decision maker you need to ask them because you don't want to waste. A lot of, you need, you a know, lot of these organizations out. have paid. They may say, "Look, hey, I, I want to, you know, too. doing something." They may say, "You know, doing something at this level, I'm going to bring my partner in." You know, I know I can give. I know I could, you know, do something like this. But if anything else, I'm going to do. I got to get my partner involved because we're, that's pretty significant, and that's more than I'm prepared to do myself. But I want to bring my partner in, talk to have him look at it, and let's just do it together. So you know, they're going to they're going to tell you what you need to do. I'm not a fan and I'm not, and this is my experience telling me you don't need to have five, you know, go and meet with people five times. You can come meet somebody and go, Hey, Trevor, I'm going to ask you for a whole lot of money, you know, and yeah. you could do it like this, Trevor, I want to ask you for a whole lot of money, but I'm not sure how many meetings I need to do this on. Cause I'm kind of new at this, but you know, I, I know you can, and I know you care. And I, I'm like, really a fan of that. Would you tell me, you tell yeah. me how many meetings I need to do? I mean, you could, you could literally do that and they're probably going to laugh. I think transparency so, you know, is paramount in that case. It is yeah. transparency yeah. and being genuine. But if you yeah. sit down and try to be prim and proper and say, and I'm going to let, you know, well, let some of you folks, that, we'll if go. anybody's got some different experience <laughs> yeah. to hear that. Yeah. But there is no prescribed number of meetings. It's a great question, Christine, by the way. I you think know, yeah. the, the yeah, longer you drag it out, the more likely it is to be no. I don't want to like equate it and call it like a sales game or what have you, but when when you're in the room and you got the meeting, I think you take your shot. I'm sorry, yeah. but yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, Christy said sometimes you just get one yeah, chance. One chance. One. And let me yeah. tell you something. There's people that are very busy. Yes. And 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 if you ever have somebody sit down and say, "Look, I've got 15 minutes for you." Yep. You better be ready for it because I go. I that's go. when it's go time, and what you need to done, have your yeah. Yeah, what we've done, what we're doing, and what we're going to do. We know that you can. We know that you care. And this is why we need your help at a commitment level of such and such. You know, I, I, you, you have to go in there prepared, and they know why you're there. If you've got so. people, you know, it's, I'm going to go back to this, and, and we'll put the link for this episode that we did. It was talking about whether you're a doer, a thinker, a feeler. You know, mm -hmm. there, there is personality-based. Sure. You get somebody, somebody who's a doer, they're doing. They don't want to sit there and spend a whole lot of time. They need they to see spreadsheets to of where the money's going. They don't, yeah, you don't need to go you know, through. They're going to tell you. You get yeah. somebody who's a thinker, they're going to ask a lot of questions. Yep, be prepared. They may need to think about it and kind of figure out where they want to be. You got a feeler. It's about, you know, the emotional part of it. But and that so shouldn't all those, stop you from making that offer. All those things, yeah, you still want to say, you know, we're asked, we're, I'm, you know, I'm in the development business. I'm here to ask you for some money. This is my job. So I just want to clear the air. That's that's what I'm coming. But what I want to really want to talk to you about is the potential level of where my we job can... is to raise money for these kids. That's why I'm here. You know mm -hmm. that, right? You know that, Tim. That's why I'm here. So yeah, I just think I what like Jason said, we're and we're huge fans of this. Even if it feels like, oh gosh, the hair on the back of my neck is standing up and like my body's getting a little shot of adrenaline. 
go, you know, yeah, don't be afraid to be honest. Jason, you said this a, a few episodes ago, but I've heard you say this a few times. It's like, you're going to go into an office with a Fortune 500 company and the cat's a billionaire or multi, multi, multi millionaire, whatever. Okay. That individual, they still have kids. They still got a flat tire, you know, on the way to school to drop their kids off. Their wife, you know, their, their baby, you know, whatever <laughs> fell out of the crib. I don't know. They're just people. So if you can connect with them, all the personality stuff aside, if you can, and just, hey, I'm a person too. Now don't tell them that your back hurts and start whining, but you get my point. Like they're just people. So tear mm -hmm. down any of those preconceived notions. Don't think with your checkbook or even with what's happened in the past, or even if you got a no last time, have a short memory and, and get in there. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, like we said, we're really, really, really big fans of being transparent. Well, it could be the guy, you. you know, it's a guy that has a plumbing company and he sits down with you and he's giving you some time. Well, he's still going to give you some time and you need to ask him something because, you know, he's probably not thinking that, well, the reason that, you know, Christy showed up here at my, at my office of my, of the plumbing, you know, my plumbing company just because she wants to hang out she wants to learn how to she wants to learn how to how to fix a leaky pipe i'm a great hang but we're here for business yeah i mean they're pretty on to it and you know if even if you're picking up the phone get to it you know hey tell them what you're doing be right up front about it tell them what you're doing tell them what the mission is doing tell them the work that you're doing and what it's going to cost to take you there right trevor and i trevor and i you know we came from sales backgrounds i mean I want a yes or a no. I don't like maybes. Now there's a deal if somebody needs more information, more that's not the same. But yeah. when you're sitting there going, they're going, well, you know, I don't know. It's been kind of a tough year. Um, but I, I'm going to, I'm not going to let them off the hook when I've got them on the phone. Cause it's taken me three calls before we ever connected. Trevor, you know, I know you're a busy guy. I, I know that you got a lot of stuff going on. Here's what I want to do. We're trying to raise, you know, money for these kids to go to camp. It's 150 grand. We're going to send 150 kids to camp. I just want to know if you'd like to help some kids go to camp. Yep. I mean, you know, and you go, well, yeah, you know, I like to help kids go to camp. Cool. Well, how many kids would you like to send? Yeah. What kind of commitment? That's the simple right ask. Now? Yeah. You know, and I it's kind of a turn and burn deal. You don't, year, what happened, yeah, you know? it, it all depends on what you're doing. If you're asking for a million dollars, you know, it's a little, it's going to be a little, probably a little bit more significant slower, but you know what? There's some guys that they'll do it like that because they yep. believe in what you're doing. hundred percent. And, and there's some late, you know, men and women out there that have that capacity. True it's believers. all about who they are and what they do and how they connect. You know, right. Christy's favorite questions, ask a potential donors, what was their favorite gift was what she mean was not what they received, but what they gave. Yep. And typically if they're significant, they go, you know what? One of the coolest things that we I was able I've been able to do because and they'll go through their story typically and they'll say you know I, I've been really fortunate and blessed and I just want to be able to do some other things for some people, is that I did X or I did Y or Z and they'll start telling you about that. Cool. Now it's not some secret mystery that you've got to unwind and say some special words that's going to unlock the unlock the you know it's not like I've got to get some combination to this to unlock the the safe. You just got to listen. They're probably going to tell you. My favorite thing about a um, guy told me one time, he said, you know what the biggest mistake people in the, he's in the real estate business. You know what the biggest mistake people have in the real estate business have? He goes, what? He goes, they talk too much. No joke. Yeah. I've definitely had that problem before. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor and I were the, the kids. That were, we were always the kids with our name on the board because we were over, sitting over by ourselves because we were talking. <laughs> Always. How hey, is that? Um, uh, it's time to draw a winner here. I yeah, hope everybody got something out of that. Thanks so much, yeah. everybody, for coming. That's really cool. Let's everybody wish Jason uh, safe travels in his Grand Canyon expedition. I hope he comes out of that canyon alive. And yeah. uh, no, you're coming out alive. I'm screwing around. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I hope, every, I hope that uh, everyone got some value out of that. If you did, Come join us next Thursday. Uh, and uh, we've also got a really cool podcast. Hey, nonprofits raise more money. Short form, 15, 20 minutes long. Hey, nonprofits raise more money. Anywhere that you consume podcasts, Apple, Spotify, you can watch them on YouTube. Leave us a review if you don't mind. We're trying to make it the number one podcast in the nonprofit universe. It probably already is. But and if you know a nonprofit professional that you think would benefit from this, please share Bring this them with on. Them. Bring them We're on. We're going to send you an email with a recording. We'll see if we put the one 
Well, yep. let's get the uh, Courtney. Would you please add the one with um, uh, that we did with the personality types? I think that'd be really beneficial. Oh, and cool. um, guys, thank you so much for thank being you, Mr. here. West. Hey, we've got a winner. Come on, Alpa now. Patel. Alpa Patel, give him a big All hand. All right, Alpa. Thanks so much you for just coming. Want a trip that you can use for your next fundraiser uh, to help you raise more money. And uh, Fun. with that, I'm going to sign off and. Thanks, Tell everybody, everybody have a great week. Yeah, we everyone have a great Thursday afternoon. Appreciate you all for being here. Hope everything's sunny uh, where you're at in your world. And we'll see you next Thursday. Thanks, everybody.